Elmer, what in the world are you doing? Oh, I'm tuning my barrel. You're doing what now? Well, you see, the harmonic vibrations of this, I gotta try to match it up, and that way I get the most accuracy out of it. So, I'm trying to use this piano here, make sure I got a good tune on my barrel. What's going on everyone? I'm Reese with Reese on the Range and today we are going to tune our barrel without a tuner. Now for those of you who may be unfamiliar with tuners, the idea is that you have this little weight on the end of the barrel that you can kind of twist in or out and set the harmonics of your barrel to where you can get the most precision out of your barrel. This goes a step beyond what you need to do with your loads so if your loads aren't quite perfect the idea is that the tuner will help get you the rest of the way because you're dialing in those harmonics. Now not everybody has a tuner but a lot of people have a self-timing brake. So we're gonna tune this barrel without a tuner by adjusting our self-timing brake. YouTube, just to be clear, this is not weapons modification. These are made to be able to do this. So I wanna be clear. So a lot of you know here that these self-timing brakes, you can screw them all the way in, get them where you want them to be nice and level or offset however you're setting your brake up. And then you just tighten this nut down and that's uh, it helps you get the timing to where this is at the right angle compared to the barrel. Now, if you are to screw this out once, now my portholes on this particular brake are all the way back at the top. I can screw this back and now it's tight again. I can go out a couple more turns and still do the same thing. So there's two turns, there's three turns. So I'm getting ways out there on three turns, but it still does the same thing. And that's the way they're designed is to be able to self-time at no matter what the distance is out that you are off of there. Now, the rule of thumb is everybody just runs them all the way in and we're doing this on a couple of turns out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna shoot three shot groups, compare them and see where we get the most precision. So I'm gonna start off with it all the way in on where I normally have it. And I'll turn it one turn out, shoot my three shot group, two turns out, three shot group, no, third turn out, three shot group, and see where we get the smallest group. So I got the results. Looks like my two turns out had the smallest group at what, 0.3. All the others were quite a little bit bigger. So now I think I'm gonna be good to go with this at 0.3. I mean, that's, that's how this tuner works, right? I'm gonna be able to shoot 0.3 groups as three shot group. I could still keep it pretty small in a five shot group. And it's gonna be a pretty accurate rifle. It seemed to work. Ah, but. Here's the thing, everybody in their mom is gonna cry about, ah, oh, you didn't do the test right, or you screwed it up, you fubbed the results. No, those are the real results. But what I actually did is I shot 10 three-shot groups with it all the way in before I ever made any adjustments to it. After I shot those, the one turnout, the two turnout, and the three turnout, and I saw that that two turnout was the smallest group out of those, I turned this to where it was two turns out, and I shot as many groups as I had ammunition loaded up for, which I think came out to be about seven total, including the first one. So now I have 10 three-shot groups, and seven three shot groups. And this is something that I never see anybody do in any tuning. And you know, all right, maybe somebody has a video out there somewhere. I haven't seen it, but the vast majority of people, what they're doing is that initial test. They're comparing one single group against the others. And they're not doing any more groups beyond that. And this creates a problem. I myself have been guilty of this. I have, you can probably go find videos of me doing this exact same thing. There are videos from people at the highest levels of this doing the exact same thing. And it's, it's just pervasive throughout the precision rifle world. And I'm here to propose something different that we should take on as a better standard so that people can actually get to what's helping them and not just buying another piece of gear. Because now that I have those 10 groups and those seven groups, what I can do is I can run a statistics test and see does the variation from shooting groups back to back still stack up to where I originally was or is the variation of each so large that it overlaps and you can't actually see a statistical difference. Something to think about, right? Maybe, just maybe, that that two turns out group that I shot originally, maybe that was an anomaly. Maybe that was in one area of my bell curve if I shot more than just the one group. So let's take a look. 10 groups versus seven groups. Is there a statistical difference? The answer is no. There is so much variation in these groups that when you shoot more than one group, it's overlapped. So I'm not here to say tuners are bad, you know, okay, I mean, I'm not personally convinced at the moment, but that's, a, that's for another debate. There are lots of other people have results, pros, Eric Cortina, all those guys, great results, fine. But are you testing it? 
Are you actually getting to what you know to be the best? Can you prove it? Can you prove that there is a statistical difference? In this case, I have failed to disprove that there is a difference. That's it. I've failed to disprove it. I haven't proven that there is no difference. I've failed to disprove that there is a difference. So very important aspect there of statistics. I'm no statistician. Maybe somebody has a better way of testing this as well that Hey, let's get that out there. Let's get people to testing things right and let's make more of this precision rifle world. But you're no good at math? I know Elmer's no good at math. Well, maybe you should take a time to try to figure out how to do this. You can do a pretty simple t-test. Just Google it. There's probably videos here on YouTube to show you exactly how to do it. You figure this out and you can do a better job and let's do something that you have some data that statistically backs up what your claim is. If you've got a friend that needs to know a little bit more about testing their loads, uh, share this video with them. Maybe it'll give them an idea.